Hello, Dr. Joe here. Now, if there is one thing I know I can help you with, it is cholesterol reduction. Amongst other things, of course. People are always writing to me asking about how they can reduce your cholesterol levels. So what I thought I'll do in this very video is put a number of the videos that I've done in the past. Uh, you're going to have a total of five videos uh, in this very video now. Put these videos together to explain how you can reduce your cholesterol levels. And what I can say is that if you follow the instructions, some of the foods that I've suggested in this very video, if you consume those foods and some of the techniques that I talk about, you will reduce your cholesterol levels. That is a promise, okay? So if you are someone who is struggling to reduce your cholesterol levels, this very video is for you. I will encourage you to watch the entire video. So how about we kick off with foods that you can have for breakfast. You're going to have five foods uh, in the very first video now, plus a bonus food. Okay, so let's um, get started, shall we? So today, uh, I want to share with you five breakfast foods that will help you to lower your cholesterol levels. Uh, that's what today's video is about. If you remember, just a week ago, I shared with you my cholesterol results and you saw how good they were. And the idea behind this video is that I want you guys to replicate those results that I shared with you. I want you to get those kind of results or be as close as possible. So um, here are five breakfast foods that I want to share with you that will help you achieve that goal. Now. Uh, if you watch the entire video, I've got a sixth food for you, okay? That would be a bonus breakfast food for you that will help you lower your cholesterol levels. And I've not talked about this particular food before on this channel. So, let's get started then. What, what would be breakfast food number one that will help you lower your cholesterol levels? Well, here it is. Chia seeds, okay? Chia seeds. Look at that. What I have here is chia pudding. So, you can make a nice pudding out of your chia seeds. Uh, isn't it lovely? It looks gorgeous. And of course, it tastes great as well. So this is a char pudding. And I've talked about using char seeds to lower your cholesterol levels before. And in that video, I talked about using the slime factor, which is the soluble fiber that is present in your char seeds. Okay, use the slime factor to sweep cholesterol out of your body. So um, it's a very nice food. It's tasty. You can make it tasty and uh, you get the soluble fiber that you need from the chia seeds, okay? So that is food number one or breakfast food number one that will help you to uh, bring your cholesterol levels down. So let's move on to breakfast food number two. And uh, if you're looking for a food that's got plenty of fiber and has plenty of micronutrients, well, you cannot go wrong with food number two. And here it is. Okay, uh, this is probably a food that you're not used to. What have I got here? This is rye bread, okay? Rye bread. It's a little bit different from your regular wheat bread. Um, here's the packet here, okay? A little bit different because it's a lot more compact. It takes some getting used to, I have to say, okay? Because it's different from your regular wheat bread. So the texture is different, and as you can see here, it's a lot more dense, it's a lot more compact, it's not as flaky as your regular uh, wheat bread, uh, but it's got plenty of fiber, and it's also good. By the way, this is whole grain bread, okay? And the closer cousin to it, to rye bread, will be a pumpernickel bread. So if you cannot lay your hands on rye bread, uh, you know, get pumpernickel bread. They have the same low glycemic index and they're just wonderful. In fact, they're all made from, from rye. So this is whole grain rye bread. Um, and it's lovely. And like I said before, it's got plenty of micronutrients. So you get plenty of vitamin B1, which is thiamine from it. You're also gonna get vitamin B3, niacin from it. You're gonna get vitamin B6, pyridoxine, and uh, you're also gonna get vitamin B9, folate from your rye bread. Plus, of course, it's gonna help you with soluble fiber that will sweep the cholesterol out of the body. So, lovely bread. I will encourage you to start using rye bread, okay? Whole grain rye bread. 
So that is food uh, number two or breakfast food number two that will help you to bring your cholesterol levels down. Let's move on to breakfast food number three. And this is this one here. This is black beans, okay? These are canned black beans. Um, now, black beans are lovely. They're lovely food, uh, plenty of protein, uh, but it's not so much the protein we're interested in here. Um, we're interested in the soluble fiber in black beans, okay? That's what we're interested in. And of course, one cup of these black beans will save you with 15 grams of fiber, 35% of which is made up of soluble fiber. So, you know, if you notice, I'm insisting on eating foods that are high in soluble fiber, and black beans is one of them, okay? You've got plenty of pectin from your black beans, and um, you know, uh, what's not to like? I, I, I'm sure you're wondering, can you have beans for breakfast? Yes, of course you can have beans for, for breakfast. So get your hands on some black beans and uh, start eating away. So that's breakfast food number three. Let's move on to breakfast food number four that will help you lower your cholesterol levels. And that will be this uh, innocent fruit here. This, of course, is pear, okay? Packed with vitamin C and also has plenty of pectin, which is a soluble fiber we're interested in. The pectin will help you to sweep the cholesterol out of the body. And of course, like I said, you get plenty of vitamin C and you also get potassium from this and some magnesium as well from this pair. So that's uh, breakfast food number four that will help us bring our cholesterol levels down. Let's move on to breakfast food number five that will help us lower our cholesterol levels. And here it is. This is oats. This is rolled oats, okay? Rolled oats. Uh, of course, steel cut oats uh, is usually better, but uh, rolled oats is just as good, okay? Um, I don't mind you using rolled oats because it's more widely available. And uh, uh, in here, a cup and a quarter of your rolled oats will supply you with 10 grams of fiber, out of which, out of which, 4.2 grams of that is made up of soluble fiber. Yes. And what's the soluble fiber in oats? Well, of course, is beta-glucan, okay? Beta-glucan, that's what we've got in here. And uh, you know when you make your oats, your porridge, do you know what's responsible for that creamy, sticky texture? Well, it's the beta-glucan, that's what's in there. That's what gives it that texture. And that's what we want to cash in on uh, to reduce our cholesterol levels, of course. Uh, you're not just getting, you know, the soluble fiber and the insoluble fiber. You're also getting magnesium and potassium as well. Uh, even more potassium than banana, okay? So, um, you know, really go for your rolled oats and uh, you get nutrients and it will help you to bring your cholesterol levels down. And you have results like mine. So, that is uh, breakfast food number five. And now to the bonus food. What is my bonus breakfast food for you that will help you lower your cholesterol levels? And that is this food here. And that is buckwheat, okay? Buckwheat, look at that, buckwheat. Um, this is a decent source of protein, okay? Nice decent source of protein. And uh, now, even though it's called buckwheat, it is not a wheat, okay? It's not a wheat grain. Um, it's got no uh, gluten in here. So if you are someone who's got celiac disease, well, this is one grain that you should love, okay? And indeed, you should fall in love with it, buckwheat. Uh, I've said it before, it's got plenty of protein, but here's the thing. It's also got plenty of other nutrients, you know? Magnesium, potassium, is they're all in here. Um, and of course, uh, that's not the reason we want to consume it to lower cholesterol levels. The reason we want to consume it is because of the soluble fiber in here. Buckwheat has a decent source of uh, soluble fiber, and that's the reason I want you guys to start adopting, uh, you know, buckwheat. Now, because the thing is, sometimes you may get bored of eating oats all the time. Well, here's a very nice substitute for you, buckwheat, okay? So uh, go for it and uh, you will uh, thank your stars and your cholesterol levels will actually thank your stars that you started consuming this uh, buckwheat. 
So, buckwheat will be breakfast food number six, or you can also make porridge with it, by the way, okay? Uh, just like you can make porridge with your rolled oats, you can also make porridge with buckwheat. You can do other things with it. You can also blend it into the flour form and do all sorts of things, bake with it. So, uh, buckwheat is a very nice food uh, that will supply you with soluble fiber, and that will help you to bring your cholesterol levels down. So, those are my six foods, and I'm hoping that you had some fun enjoying my breakfast foods, and um, you know, your cholesterol levels are gonna thank you for it if you start consuming all of these foods, and in fact, you can combine some of them uh, together to bump up your soluble fiber consumption levels, and that's when you begin to see the results reflect in your lipid panel. So, start eating these foods, and uh, uh, you're gonna love them. I'm Next, we talk about slime, okay, using slimy foods to your advantage to help you bring your cholesterol levels down that is the subject of the very next video and in this video i talk about three unique foods that you can use to bring your cholesterol levels down because they contain slime okay but before the video begins i show you a very nice animation of how the slime actually works in principle so you're going to see that and uh, it's a fun video to watch so uh, let's get started again so you got your food you start eating your food and uh, the digestion process begins the food travels to the stomach where further digestion continues and if the food has got soluble fiber the soluble fiber will be released and gets to work in the small intestines the yellow spots you see in there those are cholesterol molecules and the soluble fiber is mopping up the cholesterol molecules, takes it to the large intestines and just gradually escorts all of that cholesterol molecules through the large intestines down to the exit uh, where you expel it with your number two. Now that you understand the concept very well, it's time for me to share the three foods with you. But before I do that, I just want to say something why these foods are quite efficient in driving cholesterol out of the body. Now, they do contain soluble fiber. Of course they do. That's the reason they made this very list. However, the soluble fiber in these three foods is a kind of peculiar gel that is slimy. And uh, I call it the slime factor. So you want to use the slime factor to drive cholesterol out of the body. That's the reason why I highly recommend uh, these three foods uh, to help you to lower your cholesterol levels. So, now that you've got that, uh, it's time for me to welcome the foods and share them with you. So, food number one, what is it? Well, here it is. It's called lady fingers, or more botanically correct, okra. Uh, in Africa, it is actually pronounced okra, so O-K-R-O, uh, but of course uh, in the West is uh, pronounced okra, O-K-R-O-A. Either way, regardless of how you pronounce it, uh, okra uh, is full of uh, uh, folic acid, it's quite rich in folic acid, and guess what? It helps you to manage your blood sugar levels very well. So it's got plenty of benefits uh, for uh, your metabolic health as well as your cardiovascular health because of course it's going to help us to lower our cholesterol levels. And how does it do that? Well, let's have a look at the soluble fiber that it contains and um, here is the slime, okay? Here is the slime. Can you see that? Look at that slime. So this is what happens when you chop up the okra Put it in a blender and then the end result is what you're seeing here lovely isn't it so this is a slime that is going to help us to sweep cholesterol out of the body um, now how do you use okra for me for the most part i tend to use it in the form of soup um, and, and in fact if you are watching this video and um, you use okra in any other way I would like you to share your ideas with me uh, but as of now I tend to use it in the form of soup and uh, it works for me it's a very nice food like I said before it will help you with your metabolic health and of course your cardiovascular health 
uh, full of folic acid, full of potassium, magnesium. So um, it's a food that you should have uh, in your diet and eat it often. You should eat it often. Okay, so that's food number one, which is okra. So what about food number two that's got a slime factor that will help us to drive cholesterol out of the body? And here it is. Chia seeds, okay? Chia seeds. There you go, chia seeds. Um, chia seeds are full of uh, omega-3 fatty acids. Uh, so if for someone who is eating plant-based, this is one very nice source of getting your omega-3 fatty acids. Uh, and of course, it's got some protein. And uh, what else? Uh, what about the slime factor? So uh, let's have a look at the slime factor. When you soak your chia seeds, in any fluid medium uh, they are quite hydrophilic they'll absorb the fluid and uh, they'll swell up and this is what you get and uh, you can see the slime there this is the slime that is going to help you reduce your cholesterol levels when you use chia seeds okay chia seeds will help you will greatly assist you in lowering your cholesterol levels now there is an argument as to whether you should uh, sort of blend your chassis before you use them if you grind them up Well, my view is that it really doesn't matter But of course if you want to get the full nutritional benefits of chassis Then it will help to uh, blend it up and use the the ground form. Okay, so there we go chassis um, Bit of protein uh, as well as giving you a bit of slime to help you drive your cholesterol levels down Okay, so chassis is food number two what about food number three? And here we go. Food number three is eggplant, okay? Eggplants or aubergine, depending on where you live. Uh, if you live in Europe, it's uh, called aubergine. And uh, if you live across the pond, then it's eggplant. Um, it's a low calorie food uh, that you can use for weight management. So. That said, what about the slime factor of uh, eggplant? So I got this one from a Turkish shop. This is a roasted aubergine um, or roasted eggplant, depending on the, which way you want to swing. And uh, here it is. You can see the slime there. Can you see that? Here we go. That's the slime. Um, now, a popular way of using the eggplant is to make uh, what we call baba ganoush, okay? Is a Middle Eastern delight. Baba ganoush. And I'll give you a quick recipe. Basically, baba ganoush is uh, an eggplant dip, just like hummus, you know? So a quick recipe for baba ganoush for you here, you chop up the eggplant, roast it up, and uh, get it out of the oven and uh, chop it up some more, put it in a blender, add a bit of lime juice, add a bit of salt, add some tahini, tahini is sesame seed paste, add that, and, and then add some seasoning like cumin, oregano, uh, or even paprika if you prefer, and then blend up the entire mixture, and that's it. You end up with baba ganoush, which is eggplant dip or aubergine dip, and then you can eat whatever you like with it. You know, so uh, these are all three foods that are really low energy foods. They are low calorie foods. You can consume them regularly without having to worry about any weight gain whatsoever. So they are highly recommended. And uh, if you want to drive down your cholesterol levels, um, let me repeat that. I highly recommend them. In the next video, I share with you six dietary tips that will help you to drive down your cholesterol levels. Uh, these are really lovely tips and I also share with you a special food that will help you to lower your cholesterol levels as well. Now, this video has gathered over 1.1 million views for good reason, okay? For good reason. So, uh, I think you're going to love this video. Uh, you watch it and uh, you'll see what I mean. Now, if you're someone who is struggling to get your cholesterol levels down to what I would describe as desirable levels, then you want to pay attention to this very video. This video has been triggered by a conversation that I've been having with one of my subscribers who's uh, been uh, diagnosed with high cholesterol levels and he was surprised at the fact that 
uh, his cholesterol levels were that high despite having lost some weight. Uh, this still happens and uh, if you fall into that category, do not despair uh, because I'm going to share with you six dietary tips that you can easily implement uh, to get your cholesterol levels down. Because when it comes to cholesterol control, what goes inside your mouth matters a lot, okay? So let's get started. Now the first food uh, you want to be consuming if you've got uh, high cholesterol levels and you want to get them down is avocado. And that's because avocados have monounsaturated fats, what we call MUFAs, okay? And uh, we have research evidence to support the view that MUFAs do help to reduce cholesterol. So how much avocado should you be looking to consume if you want to get your cholesterol levels down? Well, I've got here one medium-sized avocado is all you need a day, okay? One medium-sized avocado like this, okay? Is all you need. Now, don't forget, avocados also, apart from having monounsaturated fats, they also have fiber. So it's a win-win situation when it comes to reducing your cholesterol with avocados. So uh, you just need that one medium size a day. Now I've put a little warning here. I said uh, do not consume your avocados with high fat corn chips. Because when you think of avocados, what comes to mind? Well, usually guacamole, isn't it? And uh, what do you eat your guacamole with? Well, usually is uh, corn chips that are loaded with unhealthy fats. So don't do that because when you do that, uh, such a move will be counterproductive. Not a good idea. So that's food number one. Food number two will be walnuts. Walnuts, uh, we have evidence to support the view that if you have a diet that is supplemented with walnuts, you reduce your risk of heart disease. I'm going to do a special video on that. And the reason walnuts work to get cholesterol levels lowered is because they have alpha linolenic acid, what called ALA, and ALA does reduce cholesterol, uh, is omega-3 fatty acid. Now, how much walnuts should you be looking to consume if you want to get your cholesterol levels lowered? Well, half a cup a day. That's about all you need, okay? And all you need to do is add it to salads or use it as a standalone snack, okay? So I've got some walnuts here. They're lovely. Uh, you just need half a cup of walnuts a day and uh, you'll be well on your way to getting your cholesterol levels down. They're good for your heart. Someone told me uh, walnuts are good for your heart because they're shaped like a heart. Okay, so if they're heart shaped, they must be good for your heart. <laughs> okay, <laughs> what's not to like? I'll take that. But uh, it's a lot more serious than that uh, scientifically. Okay, so uh, that's food number two. Food number three will be oatmeal. All right, and uh, the oatmeal you want to consume is the whole grain one. And the reason oatmeal helps to reduce your cholesterol levels is because it's got both soluble and insoluble fiber. And the soluble fiber in oatmeal is called beta glucan. Now, how much oatmeal should you be looking to consume if you want to get your cholesterol levels down? Well, not a lot, just one to one and a half cup a day, okay? That's about all you need uh, to get your cholesterol levels down. Now, I've got two oatmeal here okay so this one is still cut oats i don't know if you can see it okay that's still cut oats this is unprocessed oats this is rolled oats okay this is minimally processed you can have both because they are both whole grain the only difference between this and the rolled oats is that this one has been steamed up and then it's been rolled flat uh, but so that's just about the processing that's taking place. So you can still have the rolled oats or better still have the steel cut oats, okay? Both of them do work uh, to get your cholesterol levels down. And you just need, like I said, you just need one to one and a half cup a day. Okay, so that's food number three. Let's move on. Food number four is related to food number three and that's called oat bran, okay? There's a study, uh, by the way, here's the study here. Let me just show it to you. Uh, here is a study, if I can place it here. And uh, it was published in the European Journal of Clinical Nutrition and is titled, A Diet Rich in Oat Bran Improves Blood Lipids 
and hemostatic factors and reduces apparent energy digestibility in young healthy uh, volunteers and in that study uh, there was uh, a 14 percent reduction in cholesterol levels within two weeks within two weeks okay 14 percent reduction uh, of consuming oat bran oat bran the brand has just been taken off of the oats and that means uh, it's concentrated you're going to have a concentration of protein okay b vitamins and lots more beta glucan all right so uh, and how much oat bran should you be looking to consume if you want to get your cholesterol levels down just one large bowl per day okay that's about all you need now i've put here a little warning uh, do not go for uh, the old brand muffins okay please do not go for that and the reason behind that is that uh, there is an unhealthy ingredient there if you want to get your cholesterol levels down uh, so uh, do not go for that I picked the wrong fruit there so here we go this is old brand you need one bowl of this one large bowl of this a day of old brand and you'll be fine you really will get your cholesterol levels down very quickly, okay? Consuming old bran. Great. That's really lovely. Uh, so, uh, but not the old bran muffins, please, all right? I should uh, need to repeat that. So, that's food number four. Now, when it comes to getting your cholesterol levels down, those foods that I've just talked about, they will help you to get cholesterol out of the body. Now, one advice I always give to people who are struggling to get their cholesterol levels reduced is that they also need to turn the tap off, okay? Because it's pointless you're trying to get cholesterol out of the body and you're also adding more. So these next two tips, these next two dietary tips, they are aimed at turning the tap off. Now, they might be controversial, but if you're struggling to get your cholesterol levels down, then it makes sense to do what I'm about to say here, okay? So, tip number five will be this. Stop eating meat, okay? I know that sounds a bit heavy-handed. Uh, it might be controversial, but like I said before, if you're struggling to get your cholesterol levels lowered, it makes sense for you to stop eating meat. And the meat I'm referring to will include pork, beef, lamb, and veal, okay? smoked cured and preserved meat as well i included in all of this because they're full of saturated fat so if you are somebody who love your meat so much and you feel like you really don't want to give it up well i've got a substitute here for you that should help so what i've said here replace it with fish okay replace it with fish and you'll be fine okay but you need to stop eating meat if you're struggling to get your cholesterol levels down Replace it with fish. That brings me on to tip number six. Uh, it's similar because you also want to turn the tap off. I say stop eating eggs. That's what I've said here. Um, I like eggs. I eat eggs, but I don't have cholesterol issues. If you've got cholesterol issues, then you need to stop eating eggs. Um, and that's because you know, 25% of the fat in eggs is made up of saturated fat, okay? Uh, and all of that is in the yolk, by the way. So, what I've said here is if you must eat eggs, if you feel you really love your eggs so much and you must eat them, then go for egg whites only, okay? There's no cholesterol in the egg whites. So, that's a compromise. It's very important when you're trying to get your cholesterol levels lowered that uh, whilst you're trying to get it out of your body, you also need to turn the tap off. You shouldn't be replacing what you're trying to get out because it doesn't make sense you do that. You will just be uh, bouncing around from wall to wall without making any gains, all right? So that's the reason I advise that you need to turn the tap off. And one quick way of doing that is uh, for you to discontinue eating meat and then egg yolks, I should say, actually. You should stop eating egg yolks. Okay, so now the fun is just beginning, okay? And uh, what you're gonna see next now is a more recent video where I shared with you a milky drink that will help you to bring down your cholesterol levels. 
the feedback I'm getting from some people already is that this very milky drink has helped them to drive down their cholesterol levels. So uh, how about uh, we have a refresher look at this very video then? The beauty of this very milky drink is that it is very simple to put together. You know, I like simplicity. I don't like to give you guys complex recipes uh, with ingredient lists as long as my arm. No, we're not going to do that. Because what you will find here is that you only need two simple ingredients to make this very drink. Yes, just two main ingredients. And then one little thing to garnish, which you have in the house anyway. And uh, these ingredients are locally available and I'm sure you can lay your hands on them to make this very drink to help you to bring your cholesterol levels down. Why does it work? Well, it works because this drink, even though it is simple, um, is packed with phenolic acids and of course it's got soluble fiber as well as insoluble fiber. All of those, they work together synergistically to help you bring your cholesterol levels down. Okay, so it's that simple. So what are the two ingredients that we need? Well, here's one. This is a lemon fruit, okay? Lemon fruit. We're gonna need two of this. And I've already sliced one up here. The second ingredient that we need is this here. This is dates, okay? Dates fruit. Um, we're gonna need four, but if you want it to taste even better, you can use five, okay? So two lemon fruits and four dates, but if you like, you can make it five. So that's all you need. And by the way, we are gonna be using the whole lemon, okay? The whole lemon, the peel, the pulp, the flesh, the seeds, everything. All of that is going in, okay? So it's not just lemon juice. The whole of the lemon. That's what we're going to be using. So I've already sliced one up here. Let me just show you what you need to do to slice this one up. We don't need the little head of the lemon. We don't need that. And we don't need the tail. So we just chop those two bits off, okay? I've chopped off the tail there. And then the head there is gone. And you just slice it into nice quartets okay in there and then of course put that in there and then slice this one up as well okay that's it okay i told you it's very simple to put together so we we'll slice that up next is we need to get our blender here. <clears throat> so this is my blender jar, and we just add the whole lemon, like I told you, it's two lemons that are going in here into the blend jar. Everything we need, okay? The flesh of the lemon, the peel, the pear cap, everything, the whole shebang. All of that goes in there because we want all the nutrients that the lemon fruit possesses, okay? So uh, that's all of it that we need. So next to go in, the dates. So the formula is to use uh, two dates per one lemon fruit. So we've got two lemon fruits in there. And then, of course, we add four dates. Now, if you want to make it even more pleasant to the palate then of course you can add the fifth date should we add it ah, all right then let's just add it so uh, by the way remember to uh, pitch your dates okay uh, so that you don't break your blender okay so that's it and then we're gonna need three cups of water all right so i'm just gonna add one first of all for the initial blend and then i'm gonna add two more okay so Let's seal up our blender jar, and then of course, next now is uh, blending it, and then we're going to add two more cups, okay? So an initial blend uh, to get the whole thing going first of all. So that's the first blend. The next thing I'm going to do is just to add some more 
All right, what are choice? So two more cups. We're gonna add. Okay, that's it. So the third cup of water has gone in. So now the final blend <coughs> to get uh, our milky drink ready. Okay, there you go. Our milky drink that is going to help us reduce our cholesterol levels is ready. This is it. Okay, this is it. Nice drink. There we go. So, the other little thing you need to do is just get some ice. Okay, add some ice um, into. Um, <laughs> Get some ice into the cup that you're going to use and then go ahead and serve. Okay. Tasting time. Tasting time. There we go. Nice drink. Awesome. I tell you what, you are going to love it. Just one word to describe this very drink. It is some choice, okay? Some choice. You're going to love it. I promise you that. Right. So, if you've come this far, then you have done very well. You're someone who is committed to learning to improve yourself. You're someone who is committed to learning to improve your health. And that's a good thing. I thank you very much for doing that. This next video is the fifth of the videos and uh, is the last one. Uh, you'll be glad to know is the last one. And uh, it is a recipe video and uh, is also fairly recent. So we're going to refresh our memory about a pudding recipe that I talked about recently, uh, which will help you to drive down your cholesterol levels. And it is a promise that if you, you know, use this pudding often enough, uh, you're going to see changes in your cholesterol levels. That is also a promise. So uh, let's uh, have a look, shall we? What ingredients do we need? Well, we need chia seeds, okay? I've got chia seeds in here. What else we need? This is the main actor, by the way, okay? The chia seeds are the main actor. Uh, it's what's going to provide us with, you know, the bulk of the soluble fiber that we need. Uh, but there are other stuff that are going to provide us with uh, soluble fiber as well because that's what we need as well as insoluble fiber because that is how you expel cholesterol from the body so that's ingredient number one ingredient number two is the medium for softening the chia seeds and here we've got soy milk okay soy milk um, you can also use oat milk now I do not want you guys to use the nut milk for this very recipe so the almond milk the cashew nut milk the coconut milk not really uh, they don't belong here so stick to either soy milk or oat milk okay so that's ingredient number two ingredient number three is this lovely fruit here this is of course mango and the mango is going to supply us with uh, a lot of pectin another soluble fiber that will help us to expel cholesterol from the body okay so mango is ingredient number three that we need and i've got it here already sliced up basically that's all we need for this very child pudding recipe however we're going to garnish with some more fruits and the idea behind that is to also optimize, you know, the pudding with a lot more soluble fiber. So I've got some fruits here that we're going to use to garnish, uh, but they're going to help us, you know, with the cholesterol reduction as well. So everything has been designed for expulsion of cholesterol from the body. That is how you lower your cholesterol levels. Let's get uh, preparing then. So we've got the chassis here and we're going to need about five to six 
table spoonful of the chia seeds. So that's one. Uh, can you see what I'm doing? Let me bring it a little bit closer. Six, okay? So we got in here six tablespoonful of chia seeds. Next we do is add the soy milk, okay? You have to add a lot. You gotta add a lot. So we got that. And then you just stir thoroughly. So you gotta stir thoroughly to make sure that all of the chia seeds and the milk that you've added mix together. Because if you don't do that, it gets lumpy and uh, you may come back again in about 15 minutes to uh, re-stir. So you leave it, so we're just gonna put it aside because we don't need it now. And just um, a little note of caution, if you're not used to consuming high fiber foods, I would suggest you start off small. So you start off with just about two tablespoonful of the chia seeds and allow your body to get used to this level of fiber consumption and then gradually build it up to three to four to five or even six a tablespoonful of the chia seeds okay so start off small and gradually build it up don't rush the process the other thing i also want to say is that when you soak the chia seeds in the uh, soy milk or the oat milk uh, allow it to sit for an hour at least okay allow the chia seeds to sit in the milk for an hour or overnight so please do that i'm going to leave that on so here is one that i made earlier so this is here for us to use now okay next we're going to do now so we've got that already made is we are going to blend our mango okay we're going to blend the mango so let's Chuck the mango into the blender jar. Okay, so here we go. Our blended mango is here. So we've got our mango puree right here. Next, we pour the chia pudding into our dish. So this is the chia pudding, folks. Next we add the mango puree. You may be asking whether uh, we need a bit of sweetener here. Well, the mango itself is a sweetener. So it's serving a dual purpose of being a sweetener as well as providing us with some more soluble fiber and even insoluble fiber as well. You don't necessarily have to add any other sweetener. You may be asking, should you use agave syrup, maple syrup, honey? It's not really necessary uh, because this is all you need. Plus, don't forget uh, the fact that we're gonna add some more fruits. So we've got plenty of sugar here. That's about that. Next, we'll do a bit of dressing up and now, I'm adding some strawberry. So got that in there. Good, good, good. So here we go. Here is our chia pudding that's gonna help us lower our cholesterol levels. Here it is, okay? All the sweetness that you need is all in here. You do not need any sweetening agent other than the fruits uh, and the fruits are doing more than just providing you with sweetness they're also providing um, some more soluble fiber that's going to help us to uh, you know escort the cholesterol out of the body that's the whole idea behind this uh, very uh, chia pudding what is left to do now is um, have a little taste make sure i get some some of the pudding when you're done, you can always mix it all together, okay? Mm. Ah. This is out of this world, okay? Seriously. What can I say? It is tasty. It is nutritious. This is nutrient dense, okay? It's as nutrient dense as it gets. 
as far as cholesterol reduction is concerned you're okay, well on so your way if so, you've watched all five videos i have to say thank you for your patience and thank you for taking the time to learn to improve yourself and like i said in the beginning of the video if you take the steps that i talked about in all of these videos one thing is guaranteed you will lower your cholesterol levels that much i can promise okay that much i can promise so um what, what else can i say other than to say um thank you very much for watching and uh, if you enjoyed the video series so far uh, give the video a thumbs up please like the video and also please share this video with your friends with your family with your colleagues and anyone whom you think will benefit from watching this very video series if you got any questions any comments at all regarding the content of this very video presentation you go ahead and leave your comments or questions down below okay i think that's it for this very video until next time well this is dr joe signing out